everyone welcome to another installment of my diary i still do not have a proper intro for this channel but who gives a shit welcome to another video thank you guys so much for supporting me thank you guys so much for actually enjoying these videos i'm actually really enjoying getting a lot of these things off of my chest but before we get into this video which is basically talking about me setting my boundaries with my immediate family i do have to get a couple of more things off my chest so as you guys know i've been talking about my parents as well as my estranged relationship with my sister and i feel like it's my fault that i have to pretty much put this out here and i definitely have to get a couple things clear right so understand that a lot of these things that i'm talking about have happened a while ago i'm talking about either years ago or months ago so i'm definitely in a better place right now i've definitely taken the breaks that i needed to take i've cut the people off that i needed to cut off and i've also put the boundaries in place that needed to be put in place okay also there's been so many people especially under my parents video that are like you know you can go completely off grid you can cut off your parents you can definitely change your number and not talk to them and i need to tell you guys this right now i absolutely love my parents to death my parents are the homies we have a very very close relationship these whole scenarios that I'm telling you guys about right now a lot of them are in the past or a lot of them are very very new there's no real in between my parents have not continuously acted like this I have been a hundred percent adultified okay this is all true nothing that I'm saying in any of these videos is not accurate however I will tell you right now that everything that I am telling you in these videos is something that I'm now processing a lot of these things that is happening in these videos is something that is very very new for me um so I don't know how to handle it yet and it's very very weird because my parents have not always acted like this it's not one of those things where like for all the 27 years of my life they've been continuously sitting here and using me for shit and acting like this towards me and hoarding thousands of things in their house and not cleaning and wanting to live in the hood and it, trust me if that's what it was I would have been moved to Idaho a long time ago that's not what this is okay my parents have kind of just started acting like this low-key high-key I kind of feel like they're kind of like punishing me because I left them I don't know what it is but I'm kind of still processing this the main reason I am making these videos is because I know there's a lot of people that can relate to me and this is therapeutic for me and I know it's therapeutic for you guys as well who may be going through the same things that I'm going through so for those of you guys who are commenting oh you know it's not too late you can move away you could cut them off cold turkey trust me I do not need that advice if it ever gets to the point where it is too much for me to bear it is ridiculous as hell and I have kids and the top toxicity is seeping into my children trust me i will run the other way i already told them straight up if this behavior does not change soon i will not contact you guys anymore i will not speak to you guys anymore because your behavior is getting very very ridiculous i have began to set those boundaries i have began to tell them about themselves it has gotten very very nasty lately a lot of what i've been telling you guys is just leading to the crescendo of what's going on today i just had to give you guys a lot of the backstory okay i've taken my necessary breaks i've gone to therapy like i said i'm on my meds so please i don't need anyone to trauma bond with me i don't need it okay i'm just letting you guys know right now i feel like it's my fault because i haven't made that really really clear honestly just think of it this way right just like how a lot of people especially in caribbean and other black households african households a lot of you guys have dealt with your parents beating the shit out of you um a lot of you guys have dealt with verbal abuse you know your parents call you caution dirty ugly whatever the case may be my parents have never beat me my parents have never called me ugly have never done any of that right however they've done so many other things that are just as damaging a lot of people who have went through their parents beating them and called them all types of names I could never talk to my parents if they did that to me ever but there's some people that that's normalized for them you know and they're like you know that's just normal I don't have a problem with it I love my parents anyway same thing you probably could never go through whatever it is that I went through with my parents we're two completely different people I can't deal with people verbally or physically abusing me you probably can't deal with people financially abusing you or adults you two different people two different scenarios understand my situation is completely different from yours I love my parents to death we do have a really good relationship outside of everything that I'm talking about all 27 years of my life have not been horrible they've defended me to the tooth and nail they've been there for me they've done the best they can and I do genuinely think that my parents don't necessarily know better and I give them grace where it needs to be given but I do know that if it does get to a point where my mental health is really like surpassing all types of repair they gonna have to go and they know that 
of course, so before we get into the story, make sure you guys head to the description and or the pinned comment down below so you guys can join my Patreon. So on my Patreon, I'm going to be doing private life updates for the highest tier. There's going to be early access to uploads from the lowest tier and all the tiers. There's going to be so many exclusive perks. I definitely appreciate you guys so much if you join. Please do not feel bad if you can't join. I definitely understand the current climate that we're in. But if you do join, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to be talking about so many things that I can't talk about on here, such as really related types of stories and stories about my private life that I can't necessarily put on the internet now that I know the ops is watching. Hi, bitch. Bye, bitch. But of course, I'm still going to be doing stories on here that's going to piss some people off. But there are some intimate things, such as the fact that, you know, my sister's family tried to do voodoo on me in the womb or whatever. I'd love to tell that story, but I don't think I could really do that on here just yet. So that video is definitely going to be on Patreon before I ever put it out on here. So definitely make sure you guys join the Patreon. I can't wait. Oh, I'm itching to tell that story. I just got the full story the other day and I was like, oh my God, I can't wait. Can't wait. So definitely join the Patreon. Everything you need is down below. And of course, just peep the description box for all the things that you always ask me about. It's also been brought to my attention that there's been some people that are very upset about the videos that I made about my sister and I's estranged relationship. A moment of silence for their feelings. And that's all I'm gonna say on that. I don't give a fuck. So we're gonna move on. So today we're gonna be talking about the boundaries that I set forth with my family to protect my peace, okay? I'm very, very big on the boundaries. I'm very, very big on protecting my peace. And I'm very, very big on don't fucking bother me, all right? So if you haven't watched these other videos that I'm pertaining to, please make sure you go watch them because none of this is gonna make any sense to you, okay? They're very entertaining. Trust me, if you're cleaning, if you're driving, if you're just trying to ignore school, don't do that. I, I don't want to be a bad example. But if you're trying to ignore work, if you're trying to ignore your man, trying to ignore your girlfriend, trust me, this is entertaining. You know what? Don't do any of those things. I'm not trying to be a bad example. Oh my God. But if you just got some free time on your heads, just, just watch those videos. Trust me. My life is a zoovie. My life is a zoovie, okay? So let me just tell you guys right now, the way my immediate family is set up, it is my cousin, it is my parents. That's about it. I was raised as an only child, but I do have a half sister. Those stories will be linked down below as well as my playlist about growing up Haitian American. I got an interesting life, okay? So my cousin came from Haiti, but he was living in Brazil and he basically illegally crossed the border and he was detained for a while and my mother decided to take him in on the premise of his mother took care of me my entire life, so I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna take care of her child. Most ridiculous shit I ever heard of. Honestly, my cousin deserves an entire video on his own. Like, I, I can't even begin to tell you the shenanigans of that. But long story short, my my cousin has been a nuisance, okay? A nuisance ever since he moved into my parents' house. And I will say that the boundaries I had to set forth with him was due to his rent situation. Now, as I explained in my last video, the whole rent situation, I will say in the beginning was my fault. I never wanted to charge him full rent because my logic was he just came to the country. I know he's not making a lot of money. So I don't want to pay him the full third as my parents for now. Eventually, I'll hike it up as time goes on because, you know. So the rent was a $1,150 and there was utilities included and I never charged anyone utilities. My mom was the one paying the utilities. So I believe I charged everyone 400. I charged him 300 and my parents were 500. So it was 500, 500, 300, right? So it was basically 1300. The extra money was groceries and then my mom paid the utilities, right? And then I hiked it up to 400 because the man eats like a motherfucking pig. Long story short, when I was living in the house, there was this whole issue where I would never eat, okay? I talked about this a few times in other videos. And the thing is, I do not eat a lot. Okay, I may be a little thick looking or whatever. I do not eat a lot. Kid you not, I probably have like a meal and a half a day. I eat breakfast every day. I probably eat during the day and then I'll snack. I don't eat a lot and for the most part, I was working nine to five. I was in New York most of the time. I would eat out. I would come home. I would try to eat and all the food would be gone. My dad eats a lot too, but this man would eat twice as much as my dad. So literally, my mom would just cook and everything would be gone. And even he knew how to cook. He would cook, the food would be gone. And then we had a fr he would have friends over. They would have little parties, whatever. Food would be gone. So we started charging him for food and then I would have to collect the rent on his behalf um, because he didn't know anything he just came from the country also we need to keep in mind that since my dad had a gambling issue I had to collect the rent from him in order to give it to the landlord because no one trusts my father anymore because he had a gambling issue 
and would never pay shit on time, okay? From when I was in Catholic school to the rent to everything else, it was a whole thing, okay? Again, you kind of have to watch the other videos to understand where I'm coming from with this, right? So from literally the time when I was like literally about to move out, like the brink of me moving out to like the whole time I've been moved out, I've always been responsible for my parents' rent. I didn't pay it, but I would collect the funds. So when I moved out, I retained the responsibility for my mom's bank account. I would take the rent from my dad when he was working and I would take the rent from, and I would take the rent from my cousin when he was working. Now, I don't know what my cousin thought this was, but he want to live la vida loca. He want to gamble as well. He want to party. He want to do all this goofy shit, but he don't want to get a rent. He want to get a rent on time. And he would do this shit where he knew it's the first, but he would give me the rent on the fourth. He would give me the rent on the fifth. And yes, there's a grace period. Yes, you can pay your rent on the first, second, third, or fourth. But you don't want to get in the habit of paying your rent on the second, third, or fourth, or whatever the case may be. You want to get in the habit of paying your rent on the first or earlier, because then when you can't pay your rent on the first, you do have the, you know, ability to tell your landlord like, hey, I always do pay my rent on the first, but you know, this time I might have to pay it on the sixth. Can I not get a late fee? You know, you don't want to get in that habit, right? So ever since I retained it, I always paid it on time. This man come in, fucking up the motherfucker fun shui or whatever. So now he's doing this goofy shit. I will tell him straight up, hey, yo, boy, hey, yo, cousin, I need the rent. Can you leave it? You know, because he would go to work at like nine or whatever. He would come back at five. And, you know, I'm self-employed at this time. By this time, I'm self-employed. This is the time I had moved out, right? So I would come early, like 11, 12. And they, at this point in this previous building they were at, they wanted rent paid via money order. So I'd be like, hey, cousin, do me a favor and leave the rent in the apartment. What do you think this man would do? Not leave the rent. So I would sit there and be like, did I not? Or did I not say leave the rent in the apartment? Like leave it in the room. Mind you, my dad who has literally a long ass history of not paying rent would always leave his rent. I have my mom's and this man would never fucking leave the rent. So I'm like, nigga, like what's going on here? Oh, cousin. Okay, you know, I didn't want to leave it in the apartment because I didn't want nobody to steal it. What are you talking about? Who is going to steal the rent? I understand we're in the hood, but I understand that the hood that I grew up in, people don't break into people's houses. Like, it's, it's, it's extremely rare. Like, nobody breaks in nobody's houses in the hood. And we live all the way on the third motherfucking floor. Nobody's going to steal the rent, you fucking buffoon. Leave the goddamn rent. My dad's leaving his damn cash right there all the damn time I come and get it. What is wrong with you that you can't leave the damn rent? Do you have some type of PTSD? Did somebody ever steal the rent from here before from you? What the fuck are you talking about? So now I'd have to sit there and wait till it's fucking five o'clock to get his rent from him. Then he would do this bullshit of, oh, cuz, you know, who call on bap, who al cap on cobla, no me on tis on me. Oh, cousin, can you go downstairs to go get the rent from one of my friends? I don't want to talk to your dusty ass friends to get the rent. I don't even like you. I don't even like you. Why am I doing you favors? So this shit started becoming an ongoing issue. And I'm the type of person, when I have to complain about somebody, I leave a paper trail. So I'm hitting up other people in the family. I'm telling my parents, like, yo, this this nephew of yours is, is giving me problems. Every single time I come here and I need the rent, he giving me run around. And I'll be telling him days before, week before, lo, I'm coming to get the rent Friday. I'm coming to get the rent Wednesday, whatever. Whatever the first is, I tell him I'm coming to get the rent. Then he giving me run arounds about why he don't got the rent. Handle that shit. And it will consistently happen. And this was happening for years, okay? Yeah, it's happened for years. So eventually, when I started complaining to other family members, leave the rent. Now it became an issue where he gave a half a half. Cause So it will say the first was Wednesday, he would give me the extra hundred on Friday. Oh, cause I only got two hundred, I'll give you the hundred dollars on Friday. I'm sorry, do I look like Bank of Ivana? Do I look like what the fuck is that? What the fuck is going on? Hey! This nigga got me fucked up. I don't understand. I thought the rent was 300. This is not even when it was 400. I don't understand what's going on. So I'm like, all right, you got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. Now, this is when shit started really getting me mad, right? So there was one day he pulled that shit with me, right? So he literally left 200. This is not, at this point, this is around the time where the rent went from 300 to 400. And he left me 300 instead of the 400. And he said, cuz, you know, I'm going to give you the money when I come back from work or you can get it from one of my friends downstairs. Again, with this bullshit. I don't want to talk to you little dusty ass friends. You're going to run me the money and you're going to run it to me now because this is what we're not about to do. I'm tired of this shit. You know when the rent is due, the rent is due on the first. Oh, well, I thought the rent is due on the fifth. I know you're not from this country, but you can't be that stupid. You have friends that have apartments. You have friends that rent rooms. You can't be this stupid. The rent is not due on the fifth. The rent is due on the first. You have a grace period to the fifth to pay it in most cases, but the rent is due on the first. Stop playing with me. There's a reason I come get it on the first. Stop playing with me. He's 
like, oh, okay, you know, don't worry, um, you know, I, just, just, just wait till five o'clock. So at this point, I'm mad because my mom has a doctor's appointment this day. I have shit to do. I was trying to pay the rent, and I believe at this point, like he hadn't been giving me the runaround all week. It was something that had happened where like I had to pay that rent that day, and I was not trying to come back. My mom had a doctor's appointment. It was mad shit going on. So I'm sitting here annoyed, and I did have to get gas. And there's a gas station like on the corner of the block where my parents live. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go get gas. Tell me why. As I'm waiting, as I'm chilling, I was like, you know what? Since I have to get gas anyway, I'm gonna go get gas right here. I never get gas there because it's dingy and it'd be like long glass lines of people trying to get gas here. I turn and there's a motorcyclist that's making a left turn on the other end. I turn and the motorcycle person, like the person on the motorcycle gets scared because they see my car and they think they're gonna hit me and they literally fall right next to my car and it looks like I hit the motorcycle person. I did not hit them whatsoever. They didn't even touch my car, but they got scared and they fell off the motorcycle. And I'm just sitting there like, I almost hit a fucking motorcycle list all because you didn't want to pay your fucking rent on time. What kind of fucking bullshit is this? This is the thing. A lot of people are probably like, bitch, you ain't hit him. You could have just kept on going. You're right. I really could have. Even my boyfriend said that. My mom said that. My mom was like, I don't know why you stopping for. I don't know why you stopping for. You ain't hit him. And I'm like, I mean, I'm human. And the person fell right next to my car. I'm not about to just sit there and be like, oh, damn, that's crazy. I, I felt bad. I was like, oh my God, like, are you okay? Like, uh, I, so he's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Da, da, da. And I'm like, okay. Okay, well, bye. And now, as I'm getting gas, he gonna come to my car like, oh, what's your insurance? Pussy nigga. <laughs> what are you talking about? I said, eh, sir, um, I didn't hit you. Oh, but, um, I got scared and I fell off my bike because of you. I said, but I didn't hit you. Okay, but I fell because of you. I said, but I didn't hit you. So you don't need my insurance. Okay, but I felt, I said, listen, I didn't hit you. Mind you, he was on the phone. So I'm guessing whoever he was on the phone with tried to tell him like, oh, well, you, you can get money. Da, da, da. And I know the person was Haitian. The person like that was on the motorcycle and whoever he was on the phone with was Haitian. Haitian neighborhood. I knew the accent. Like that nigga was Haitian. Okay. So I'm just sitting there like, why just it was just so fucking annoying and you guys are probably thinking well it's not necessarily your cousin's fault it's not but at the same time i wouldn't be at the gas station this whole situation would have never happened if you just paid your damn rent on time and left the money like i fucking said so all of these runarounds of oh i'm gonna give you the money later go get it from my friend that is so fucking stupid if you would have just gave me the shit when i said you gave me the shit we wouldn't be going through this so now he's like oh well my leg hurts my arm hurts <laughs> I said, well, you could take my number down if anything happens, but I'm not giving you anything. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, I was like, like, do you want me to call you an ambulance? No, 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 no. You don't have to call ambulance. I said, do you want me to call the police? No, 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 no. I was like, okay, well, if you want my insurance information, my insurance ain't filing no claims with no police report or anything. So that's the only way. But I, the only thing I'll give you is my number. So my logic is he probably had no papers or anything, or he wasn't registered to be driving that motorcycle anyway. So it's like, it, it's just ridiculous. Like, I'm like, you see the shit that you put me in cousin so my boundary for that was do not okay i repeat do not ever in your life leave any rent money unless it's the full rent money and if you don't have it that day tell me straight up or i'm not fucking coming and ever since then he has not played with me and most of the time i don't even take cash from him anymore it's all zell okay the whole thing is from zell anytime he try to hit me with the oh well my friend ah, oh well i don't have a ah, i don't got time for that because like literally you almost put me in some shit okay you literally almost put me in some shit because you didn't want to have your money on time it's just absolutely ridiculous like i do not play that shit with him anymore and he's just the type of person like he just makes relationships with people so that he can get what he wants okay ever since he got there he's just been doing that shit he'll do this thing where he cleans your room he cleans your space or he cleans the house and he takes something from you this is something he's been doing this is something he he's been doing since he first came to america okay next thing you know something else like an electronic or some sort of like hat or whatever a watch of mine is missing and it's like oh my god thank you so much for cleaning wow where's this where is that? Oh, it's in his room. Like, nigga, just ask. So I told him straight up, don't come in here. Don't come in here, no clean shit. I don't give a fuck if it looks like a pigsty. I don't care if it looks like the Haiti earthquake just came through this bitch. Don't fucking clean in here, you little bitch. Like, it's just annoying. When it comes to my father, again, we know homeboy has a work since the panoramic, okay? And this man had this whole habit of, can I have 10? Can I have a 20? Can I have 50? Can I have 100? And for the most part, my whole entire life, any single time I gave him money, he would always pay me back. My mom, on the other hand, never. So I never gave that lady any money. But lately, he been fucking up. But that's because he hasn't had a job. It makes perfect sense, right? If you don't have a job, don't borrow money. Obviously, if someone doesn't have a job, don't give them money. I 
was going off the whole premise of, well, he's always giving me my money back, so I have no problem giving this man money, right? This is the thing, right? I feel like my father's gone on the premise of, oh, you're my kid, so you have to take care of me shit. And a lot of Caribbean, foreign, and black parents do this shit, okay? It just must be a black universal thing where they think that their kids just have to take care of them, their kids have to do this, that, and the third. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, my father knows better than to ask me for any money directly anymore. So now what he does is he goes to my mom any single time I give her money and he's like, oh, um, did she give you any money? And my mom's dumb enough to give it to him. And then she comes and complains to me. So now I don't give her any money unless it's something that she absolutely needs because y'all both got me fucked up. So there's the boundary there with the both of them. But when it comes for directly my father, the reason I placed the boundary with him was I actually talked about this in another video was when he lost the rent money and that's what had forced me to basically move out. So if you guys are not aware of this story, basically I'm gonna give you guys a short little synopsis. Back when I was about to move out, I believe that this was about 2018, I had basically gotten my first big YouTube check, right? This is when my channel first started to take off. And when I had got this check or whatever, it was literally around the time where my dad had not paid the rent for some odd months. The gas had been cut off for maybe a year or two. The electricity was run up to like maybe $3,000. The gas was already to $2,000, okay? So we're talking about they in debt for like $6,000, $7,000 at this point. It was a lot of money. And literally my YouTube check would have covered literally all of it for the most part. My dad had came up to me and he told me he lost the rent money for the following month that was coming. And I was just looking at him like, now, at the time, I believe that I was responsible for the cable bill. I don't know if I would pay it directly or if I would give it to him, but the cable bill, I don't remember, was being paid, but it doesn't matter because we don't got no electricity at this point. And I was enrolling into grad school. So it's like, how the fuck am I gonna do grad school without any internet? Because this was going to be an online program. And then we're about to get evicted. It, it just didn't make sense. You know, so my dad was like, yeah, I lost the rent money. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I just looked at him like, yeah, that's crazy. And I was going to Florida. I think I was going to Playlist Live. So I went on my trip and I came back and he looked at me like, oh, I thought you were gonna give me the rent money and I just looked at him like why would I do something stupid like that like I, I, I was so confused I was like, what the fuck I'm gonna and I had the biggest decision to make. I said, if I get, I know how my parents are, bro. And I know how they are based on how they act with other people. And I know in general, this is just how human beings are. If you bail them out of situations like that, they're gonna think that they could continuously do the same shit. Just by the pattern of give me 20 here, give me 50 here, give me 100 there. I know that if I give you fucking $6,000, $7,000, not only are you not gonna be able to pay me back, but you're gonna get in the habit of doing this shit again. This is not the first time the gas has been cut off, the electricity has been cut off. It's been cut off numerous times my whole entire fucking life. You think I'm stupid? And he just got mad or whatever. And I'm just looking at him like, I don't know what you're mad at. You should be mad at yourself. Because where did this money go? Mind you, every single body was working. I was mad that he was negligent with everyone's money at this point. He was in charge of my mom's finances at the time, not me. So I'm like, you have her check. You take her money. Where the fuck is her money going? What the fuck is going on here? You know, the only thing that I could see that, that would make sense is the gas. Even I could say, there's been times, like now, I, I be handling the gas bill. And I'm like, God damn, even though I'll pay it every month, that shit will still skyrocket. You know, that bill is very very hard to handle but everything else make it make sense you're gambling it as you always have i'm not giving you one red cent and then about a month or two later i ended up moving out definitely stopped giving him money after that because it's like you must be out of your rabbit ass mind if you think i'm about to give you anything after what the fuck you did that was the most horrible when i'm telling you horrible like one of the most horrible times of my life i was mentally distraught i could barely breathe and a lot of people have always always asked me like why I never did a house tour of my first ever apartment that's because I didn't want to fucking be there I want to be an obedient Haitian child I wanted to stay in my house till I was married be courted like a Haitian child and fucking I love you on well okay th that wasn't really a courtship but you guys understand I wanted to be a traditional Haitian child I did not want to move out I never had dreams of having my own apartment like I didn't care for that shit I loved being in my parents house like I had no problem being in my parents house I had no problem with that shit like even ask my man, bro. My man's like, wow, like, I love the fact that you're a Haitian woman and you live in your parents' house and you respect them and come home at a decent hour. Yo, I kid you not, like, I used to really live life. Like, I had no problem living in my parents' house. I loved my parents and I relationship. It was like, when that whole situation happened, I believe in 2018, it had to be 2018 because I graduated 2017. Yeah, when that whole situation happened in 2018, that's when shit started to go downhill. That's when my resentment started to build. That's when I started to get really, really annoyed. That's when it was like, we're not doing this, okay? We're not doing this. I moved out. It is what it is. And I think that's when I ain't gonna lie. No, not I think, but I really think 
they start doing this shit to me on purpose. Cause like that's when they really started to act really nuts. <laughs> like they really started to act really nuts. Cause I never, they they never started to act like that. Like it was never like this at all. It was never like this. They never started to act like that. My main boundary with my father for real for real was I'm not giving that man any fucking money. No, not out of my pocket anyhow. If he needed money, I would ask my mom, um, your your husband, he's asking for twenty dollars. Would you like to take that out of your bank account? Yes, no, maybe so. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. no. When it comes to my mother, wow, boundaries on boundaries on boundaries. My mother, on the other hand, a lot of people, especially after my sister story time, felt like my mother was a saint. My mother doesn't have to deal with all of that shit. Um, I'm gonna tell you this right now, my mom's not a saint. I don't hate the lady, okay? But for a long time, I could say I didn't really bang with her. Like, we didn't have the best relationship until I became an adult. I didn't really start banging with my mom till probably end of high school. End of high school, into college, that's when we really became close like now that's the homie like now like we be like yo what's good like bitch what's good like ho what's good like you you just like me and my mom like that's my bitch okay but she not innocent she's very very annoying she's very passive aggressive she's very vindictive and she's extremely problematic and she knows she problematic she'll tell you she problematic so i will say the first time i had i realized i had to put boundaries down with my mom was honestly when i realized that she's the reason that my father is out here doing whatever the fuck that he wants okay now i understand my father's a grown-ass man i understand men are men i understand that humans are humans and adults are adults they're gonna do what adults do right but also understand that if you don't like something that someone's doing if you are the wife or the husband of someone and you are letting them walk all over you they're going to continue to do it what you allow is what is going to continue and this is something i noticed since i was a kid with my parents right my mom is never someone that will ever say don't do this stop doing that even with me i don't think she's ever necessarily said professor really unless it was like me trying to touch a fucking fire on the stove for real like she's not going really say don't do this she's more of a well you should know not to do that read between the lines she's really a read between the lines type of person i don't know it, it's weird because i've never met a pisces like that oh no that's a lie i know a lot of pisces like that what am i fucking saying but like, it's weird like she's a pisces my dad's a gemini i don't know I, I, I don't think that's a good mix but a lot of people tell me that pisces like gemini's i, I don't fucking know for what but it, it's just weird you know because she just lets the man do whatever the fuck he wants she'll sit there she'll give him money he sits there and does shit and all she does is passively complain she won't be like oh i don't understand why you do this to me i don't understand why you take the money and gamble it away I don't, I don't, I don't, why don't you get a fucking job she'll just be sitting there like people just be here all day doing nothing don't you feel some type of way about yourself when you just sit around doing nothing all day that just don't make no sense tell the nigga to get up and get a job like that's just me like i would just be like go get a motherfucking job but she's very passive and that's a toxic trait being passive is very very toxic say what the fuck you mean to me what the fuck you say to sit there and give somebody who doesn't have a job and doesn't want to work money is problematic that was my first thing with her i started telling her like you know that's a thing right like you need to not do that you need to not say yo don't you feel some type of way tell him like yo don't do this don't do that stop gambling like you need to say something she's like me me he should know what he's doing and i'm like clearly he knows what he's doing but you need to say that it bothers you not like just blow up like once a year because that's also something she does she just doesn't understand that to this day you know like i said i've been begging for my parents to get a divorce since i was a kid because i'm just like it just doesn't work it just doesn't function you know so now i just tell her straight up if you're gonna complain about certain things that are just common sense at this point because she does the same thing with my cousin she'll complain about all these things that are mundane she thinks that my cousin steals food to go make the food at other people's houses she thinks that my cousin is stealing her things and, and doing vindictive shit and talking shit behind her back but she'll never say anything to him she won't complain about the fact that he brings random women to the house at all types of days and hours of the night and leaves them there while he goes to work she won't complain about anything that actually makes sense she'll complain about food and i'm like why don't you say anything directly to these people why don't you say nothing directly to my father to my cousin oh well, i'm not gonna say anything and i told her if you're not gonna say anything to them don't say anything to me boundaries don't say anything to me if you're not going directly say anything to the people that you have an issue with it's exhausting and it's tiring because at this point you're stressing me out when you're telling me that you're stressed out about something that you won't address with the people who are stressing you out stop it and that brings me to something that had happened when i first started college right so back in 2013 my mom had got fired from a job that she held for like over 20 years right um she had that job since she like first came to jersey i was born in long island when she first came to jersey she had worked at the sheraton hotel for like literally over 20 years and then she had got fired and this was something that like shattered her like she she was very very depressed about it and she talked about it to me every single day while i first started college and i I remember my parents only helped 
me pay college my first semester. After that, they didn't help me mainly because my mom got fired. My dad was still working, by the way. But again, since my mom stopped working, he was the only one paying the bills. But the crazy thing about this is my mom was the only one paying the bills for a very long time. And my dad actually made more than my mom. My mom was helping me pay college. And my mom was paying all the bills for a long time. Because there's times where my dad didn't work completely. So what's really, really interesting is you had a problem helping me pay college. And didn't help me pay college because my mom wasn't working. But my mom was doing everything for a long time by herself. And helping me pay college. And my dad didn't want to help me at all. So it's very, very interesting when like people who look at me from the outside. And especially on my sister's side of family want to sit there and be like, oh, well, my dad did this. My dad did that. My dad only has one kid. And it's like that motherfucker ain't do shit. Like my mom was struggling. My mom was stressed. And I understand that for a long time I was the only one she had to talk to but I had to tell her straight up boundaries please do not talk to me about this I understand your stress I understand your sad but I do not want to hear about this I am so stressed out right now I don't know how I'm gonna pay for college in that semester I don't know how I'm gonna get through college for the next four years because no one's gonna be able to help me like I'm depressed as fuck right now eventually I think after like six months she got a new job and she didn't try to help me again my dad didn't try to help me no one tried to help me Sandhya helped me any other friend helped me I got those loans in my name no one helped me and that still to this day pisses me the fuck off you know and the other day I remember I was talking to my mom about it and she tried to say that she helped me after that I said no the fuck you did not the payment plan that you and my dad paid for out of pocket that was the first semester and that was it because you lost your job six months later you got a job and you did not pick up the slack after that no one fucking helped me Sandhya did play with me again lie to me again I will never talk to you again try to say that you helped me pay for college again this is the end of our relationship because I will never ever ever forgive anybody that tries to say that they put money in my pocket or they put money towards my education and they did not you did not my parents have sat there and like oh this is going on that's going on oh my god what was me and I understand that for a lot of people their kids is what they have their kids is their their solace you know you your kid is your best friend and for my parents that's what it is we have a very close-knit relationship like I am their best friend but my mental health is very very important and at that time especially in college I was not diagnosed I thought I was just depressed I, I didn't know I was bipolar I didn't know I had ADHD or whatever but this shit was fucking me up I ended up failing like math um mainly because the class is very early and I chose to sit on the quad and shit but a lot of it was the stress of not knowing how I was gonna pay the next semester you know not knowing how I was gonna finish the rest of the four years you know I think I was working like three jobs at one point YouTube wasn't taking off yet you know so like parents if you're watching this do not dump your shit on your kids like I understand like sometimes yeah you want to be open you want to be honest that's your best friend whatever <sighs> Your kids feel your pain. I definitely had to tell my mom, like, yo, please don't dump your shit on me. My parents had a laundry mat that was very, very close to them, right? And I bought them a carriage so that they could do the laundry. I bought them at least three. My cousin broke every single one of those carriages. So I began to bring my mom to the laundry mat. I hate laundry mats. It's actually one of my biggest pet peeves. I don't like the laundry mat. I don't like the supermarket because the supermarket gives me legitimate anxiety. I talked about it before in a vlog. I don't like I like it. I literally instacart my groceries. Um, the only thing I can do is go to farmer's market i can do like dollar tree like little groceries but like most big ass supermarkets i have to mentally prepare to go and sometimes i walk in and i walk straight out like i it, it gives me anxiety but it's way better now than it used to be like years ago um i have to be with someone and even at that like say for like my mom disappears for like more than five minutes like i start panic like it, it, it's that bad i genuinely don't like laundry mats just because like i just don't like it. i don't like the idea of going i don't like the, i just don't like it i was like Ugh, i have a laundry in my house just give me the laundry and i'll do it and i did this for like two years didn't have a problem to be honest with you so much easier i just throw it in at night throw it in the dryer fold it when i have time i did my parents laundry now a lot of you guys are like bitch you were saying hell the fuck no i would never this is the thing i have no problem doing it until one day there was a dead rat it was done. Called my mom, I said, you know there's a dead rat in the motherfucking laundry. This is when I really wanted to move them out for real out of that apartment. Oh my God, da 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 da, like what, there's a dead rat? I was like, yeah, Um, after this, I'm not doing your laundry anymore. Like I will not do your laundry. I'm not touching this shit. Um, no, you're gonna have to go to the laundry mat. This is wicked. I can't believe this shit. Hell no, this is wicked. No, 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 no. She's like, oh my God, da 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 da. Like I'm gonna make sure I really go through the clothes. Da, da, da. I don't know if she thought I was joking. I don't know if she thought I was over exaggerating, but I was dead ass. I come over to the house and I'm about to leave. She's like, oh yeah, don't forget to take this sack of laundry. Did I not say I was not going to take the laundry anymore? Oh no, I went through them, there's nothing in it. I said, I'm not taking the laundry anymore. I said, I looked through the 
the laundry. I said, I'm not going to do your laundry anymore. Do you not listen when people talk to you? I said that I looked through it. I'm sorry, who are you talking to? I said, I'm not going to wash your clothes anymore. So now we literally looking at each other. <laughs> I'm not taking this laundry. So she's sitting there. I'm sitting there. We sitting there. And she's like literally going off on me. Like now she's just yelling and crazy all and all of this shit. Mind you, this whole conversation was in curl. And I was just looking at her like, you can yell all you want. You're making the situation worse for yourself. You're not yelling at me and I'm not taking this laundry. And I said, okay, bye. See you next time. Close the door and I left. Boundaries. I said, I'm not washing the motherfucking laundry. I'm not washing the motherfucking laundry. I'm not taking this laundry in my house. Next thing you know, there's rodents all over my house. Little baby rodents in my house. Little fucking roaches. I don't know what the fuck. You got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. Like you must be out your goddamn mind. There was a baby like dead rat situation in your clothes that's nasty she got mad at me she ain't talked to me for like a week best week of my goddamn life you did that's hurting me Aww. invisible tears so another boundary i had to put with my mom is um the uber situation so this is so fucking irritating and this is something that really used to make me mad so my mom's worked in the hotel industry since i was born pretty much since before i was born and the thing is she's always worked sundays mainly because she allows herself to work on sundays and you guys are probably like, okay well a lot of people can't control their schedule my mom is very very cool with the administration of her job she's very very cool with the supervisor and she could not work sundays if she wants to because she's constantly bragging about how she can be working any day that she wants to and how literally they put her on the schedule and don't put her on the schedule and she can manipulate the schedule listen my thing is if you if, if you could brag about how you can work when you want to and not work when you want to whatever then nigga tell them don't fucking put you on schedule on sundays and this is the thing my mom takes the 24 bus if you guys live in jersey or north jersey specifically you know the 24 is the worst bus to take it never comes on time sometimes it don't come at all the 24 is like the worst bus you can take okay it, it's 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 horrendous okay not only is it ghetto as fuck but again it never comes on time on sundays it's even worse holidays ugh, forget it so my mom is constantly complaining that on sundays it's just like the worst experience sometimes she comes over at 11 o'clock meanwhile she gets out at 4 30 like she'll be sitting there waiting 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 and i'm sitting there like okay so why don't you just tell them not to put you on schedule on sunday she's like oh but you know i make more money on sundays da, 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 da. but mind you i'm like i understand that you're saying you make more money on sundays but sitting there waiting six hours for a bus is just ridiculous to me i, I, I just don't understand it so what she does is she'll wake me up at 7 30 in the morning on a sunday just to get her an uber and you guys are probably thinking okay well it's not that serious it is that serious because even though like her job is probably like maybe no more than 10 minutes from like the house the uber can be anywhere from 15 to 30 dollars and that's only one way so now technically i'm paying anywhere from 30 to 60 dollars because she'll she'll call me again later on just to go to and from work why and she could call a taxi but she doesn't want to call a taxi she wants to call me to call her an uber even if she has money on her and i know she has money on her because my mom's not dumb my mom saves money a lot she gets tips in the room and even if like say if i'm not available or something like that she always finds a way back home because she will call a taxi so it just annoys the fuck out of me because first of all saturdays are the days i actually do sleep late i'll be chilling i'll be with my man i'll go out like those are my chill days and you're sitting there waking me up at 7 30 just to get you an uber and then you're calling me again later at like four to five whatever o'clock call your uber to go back and these ubers are very expensive at that time because either they're not available or whatever the case may be it's a fucking sunday okay niggas chilling on a sunday so it's like ma'am just take the damn taxi or just like be a little bit more considerate and tell them please don't put you on schedule because you can't find a ride there's so many other people that could work on that day but you sitting there volunteering yourself to work on that day i told her that numerous times like listen these ubers are expensive and they add up and mind you make it a little bit less expensive okay say if it's like just 15 so 15 15 that's 30 30 times four that's 120 dollars a month that's a bill you're spending 120 dollars a month and then plus i'm paying 60 dollars a month for you for your bus ticket for what for what like at this point tell her to take you off the goddamn schedule and she just doesn't want to and mind you again she's bragging on the fact that she can and she won't there was a week where i came and i picked her up because like i was just in like the area i think i was at the um mall and i was close to her job or whatever and i had driven out like 15 20 minutes around to go pick her up and she's like yeah i told her to take me off the schedule on Sundays because you know I just can't it's just too much I thought that was the end of that then the next following week which was probably like the week before we ended up moving them to the better area she said she was working on a Sunday and I said hmm. 
everything was going on at the time and I didn't get her bus ticket yet, I said, okay, I'm gonna call you over. This is the last Uber I'm calling you. Do not ever, ever call my phone or text my phone. Well, she doesn't text, but don't ever call my phone asking me to call you an Uber again because this is getting out of hand. It's getting ridiculous. And like I said, it's very, very expensive. If anything, tell my dad to give you a taxi number or something like that because it's gonna be cheaper and I'm tired of waking up. I'm the type of person, if you wake me up out of my sleep, I automatically get a headache for the whole day that I cannot get rid of, okay? I'm very, very sensitive to being woken up. Even if it's an alarm, like if I set an alarm for 7.30, best believe I'm up at 7.15 because I can't with alarms. I hate alarms. I hate anything waking me up in my sleep. So I was just like, listen, this is my last one. I called her the Uber following week. She lets the lady put her on a schedule again. She calls me at 7.30 and I was up for her. I was ready because I knew she was going to pull that stuff. I said, didn't I tell you not to call me asking to call you an Uber? Stop playing. Call the Uber. I said I wasn't going to call the Uber. Patchwap MTV. Uh, don't play with me, girl. I'm not playing. What did I tell you last week? I'm going to be late for work. That's your problem. Walk to the bus stop and take the bus. The bus does it not come on Sundays. It just takes a very, very long time to come on Sundays. You're going to have to pace yourself and take that bus. And I hear her in the hallway because you can hear the echo. She really was dead ass expecting me to call this Uber. Y'all, this lady starts going off on me. Oh, when people say that they really care about you, they don't care about you. When people say that they really want to see you succeed, they don't. They don't really want to see you succeed. Oh, you're really serious. You're not going to call the Uber. She's saying all this in Creole, by the way. You're really not going to call the Uber. I'm not going to call you the Uber. Oh, if I die, it's on your fruition. How dare you? Go off. And I'm just like, for everything I've done for you, you're really about to go off on me because I won't call you an Uber that I already said I was never going to order for you because you got me fucked up. You guys be doing too much. I told the show, I was like, and mind you, this is already after all the shit that I told you guys in the past video of all the shit that they did to me had me cleaning and packing everything all by my fucking self all this shit so i was already heated like i was already tired i'm heated i'm annoyed I'm, I'm i'm on a hiatus from everybody i haven't posted videos like i'm stressed i'm tired i'm annoyed with all of that i'm dead ass i ain't calling it over oh Mimki fell oh you did this to me how dare you do this to me da, da, da. i said how dare you do this to me i'm not tired i'm not stressed how dare you do this to me my nigga oh well well i Okay, well, well, okay. All right, well, well, all right, well. Matono. Oh, well, I'm gonna wait for you then. I'm gonna wait for you then. Well, don't talk to me then. Don't talk to me. Click. No. She's like, okay, well, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Don't talk to me. Hangs up. My mom says she was done with me, bro. She says she done with me. Don't talk to me. And she hung up on me. Let me tell you this right now. Don't ever hang up on me. Don't ever, ever say that you not talking to me. And don't ever say you don't with me. Because I swear to God, if you think I will call you ever again, Again, I'm never gonna talk to you like ever again if you ever say that you're done with me you hang up on me hanging up on me and spitting on me two things you're never gonna do because you're never gonna hear from me again I, I don't play that shit biggest pet peeves in life so I was just like you're done with me because I wouldn't call you an uber that I said I was never gonna call boundaries she never called me to call her uber ever again don't fucking play with me then she really didn't talk to me I think she didn't talk to me for like two weeks after that I was like damn you lucky you my mom because you fucking clicked on me I, I told her straight up after that I said um you hung up on me don't ever don't ever hang up on me again I ain't doing um there's a lot of people that have hung up on me and I never told them ever again because um no yeah we don't we don't we don't do that over here that's childish as fuck use your words not like y'all to be honest I, I didn't even take her that serious that point because I was like I know you mad because I'm mad too you be alright but you ain't got no right to be hanging up on me I should be hanging up on you the fuck so like to be honest lots of boundaries have been set forth okay and it, it's to the point where now I don't even go over there anymore. Um, real talk. I used to go over there at least once, even twice a week. Um, because I really enjoyed going over there. I really enjoyed just like talking to them and just catching up on shit. I go over there maybe twice a month now. Um, or just genuinely when I have to. And if I'm there, no more than an hour. Because I don't want to be there at all. I would just go out in the building and go visit other people in the building. You know? Um, so it's just yeah i just don't want to be there because again boundaries you know i i gotta protect my energy they be stressing me to fuck out um i was saying it before there would be times i'd go there spend a hundred of fucking dollars they want to go out they want to do this they want to buy that they want to nah. you know so it, it's it's really really a lot you know it's a lot so like i said before when you're seeing a lot of these past videos a lot of it is past shit a lot of it is old shit i'm going through what i'm going through or have been through you're not alone do what's best for you if you feel like you have to go no contact i 
trust me no one's gonna blame you if you feel like you have to keep them in your life no one's gonna blame you if you feel like you gotta do 50 50 love people from a distance whatever case may be no one's gonna blame you just do what's best for you because that's all that matters take breaks um move to idaho move to nebraska move to las vegas whatever okay move if you have to because you matter most with that being said make sure you guys peek the description box for everything that you guys always ask me about please join the patreon if you can please go check out my other two channels because they lit okay we out here like share subscribe do all that and i'm gonna see y'all next time bye